Good morning, everyone. My name is Indy and I'm a 15 year old naturalist from Nottinghamshire. And it is my great pleasure today to be speaking with the fantastic Mark Thomas, who's head of the RSPB investigations team, to talk a bit more about the amazing work that him and his team get up to all across the UK. So, Mark, thank you very much for joining us this morning. And can you tell us a little bit about and kind of give us an overview of what Raps persecution is? Hi, Indy. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Um, so, I lead a fantastic team. We've got about 15 staff in the team and we try and tackle the illegal killing of birds of prey. So these amazing birds, peregrines, goshawks, eagles, and these are birds that unfortunately are illegally killed. They are shot, trapped and poisoned. And most often that is in, in link, linked in with land that is used for shooting. So be it driven grouse moors in the uplands or pheasant or partridge shoots in the lowlands. So the team I manage, we're out there every single day trying to detect crimes. We spend a lot of our time on grouse moors in particular. We're walking around, we're looking for the signs of illegal persecutions, be it traps, poisons, um, shooting of birds of prey. We do that across the whole of the UK. And every single year we produce an annual report called Bird Crime, and that details all the incidents that have taken place. What we try and do is detect things gather the evidence and that and that could be using covert methods so cameras hidden cameras to gather evidence and once we've got evidence of a crime that's taken place we will then pass that to the police and we work jointly with them in investigating that matter hopefully to a successful conclusion at court brilliant stuff so why and whereabouts in the uk does this mostly happen Okay, so incidents occur all the way across the UK, but the worst areas, the black holes, are particularly in the uplands, so places like the Peak District, the Yorkshire Dales, uh, the Cairngorms National Park, the Angus Glens. They're places where driven grouse moors exist, and those places are where some gamekeepers are killing birds of prey. So when we look at the stats, um, around three quarters of all the convictions for people killing birds of prey those people have been linked to shooting within game, gamekeepers or land managers. So the problem, we absolutely know where the problem is. It's in hotspot locations where driven grouse moors conflict with birds of prey. And this is where the pressure is put on people to kill birds of prey illegally. So all birds of prey have been protected in the UK for many years. And many of these birds of prey, birds like hen harriers, are, are are really rare and they're under enormous pressure so we have an absolute duty to conserve these birds absolutely so you mentioned earlier about that you publish the bird crime report every year which talks about all the sightings that, and all the records i suppose of persecution throughout that past year so apart from uh, i suppose collating the data you guys do a lot of field work don't you yeah so we've got um half of the team approximately half of the team spend every single day out in the field and we're intelligence led. So what that basically means is information comes in uh, about crimes or about suspicious incidents or about people, and we follow that up on the ground. So we will go to the locations where we have the best intelligence and we'll routinely go there and we'll notice what is happening on the ground. And the aim of that is to try and detect crime. So it may be um, some gamekeepers will use a crow cage trap. So this is about the size of a garden shed it's got an entrance in the top. It works like a lobster pot. So when things go in, they can't get back out. Now, you can use these to control magpies and crows, but these traps can be abused. And if you put carrion or meat in, in the traps, they will attract birds of prey. So if you're using that trap lawfully and a buzzard is in there, you open the door, you let the buzzard go. But we know these traps are abused. So we'll often find traps in locations where we know persecution has happened before. We'll put a camera in and we'll let the camera run for a period of time. When we come back to view it, we'll see what has happened to anything that's been caught in the trap. So um, a number of jobs like this, we've actually filmed gamekeepers come along and actually unlock the trap, go in there and then kill buzzards or other birds of prey that have been caught in the traps. And we've got the evidence. They don't know the camera's there. And that evidence has been crucial in gaining convictions. And people might say, well, why didn't you just let the buzzard go? Well, we can't be there every single day and it's far easier to catch somebody who's killing these birds of prey and stop the person killing them. And that will save many, many, many more birds in the future. Good stuff. And I remember um, cause I keep seeing almost every time I log on social media, it's like another case of persecution, but sometimes they're from quite far back. And I think they're still releasing some reports that were from lockdown. And I think lockdown was probably one of the worst times, wasn't it, for rapid persecution? 
Yeah, so we, we produce the figures normally in the autumn for the previous year because it takes us a long time to contact all the police forces and to get the conclusions of all these jobs. But but we knew within a week or two of lockdown happening, we knew there was a surge of incidents coming in. So, so there was many, many incidents coming in. They were coming in from all the traditional places where we've had persecution in the past. And we were incredibly busy. The team was stretched. It was really run off its feet during this time. So we had permission to go out because detecting crime is seen as essential. So we worked hand in hand with the police. And whilst reports were coming in, we were also involved in a number of search warrants with the police in North Yorkshire, a couple on grouse moors where buzzards had been shot. So it was a really busy time. So come this autumn in a few months time, we'll be, we will be releasing the figures from last year. And it already looks like it's going to be a record worst year, uh, particularly in England for birds of prey. And I suppose one of the most affected birds of persecution is the beautiful hen harrier. Now, I know there's quite a high figure of birds that have been missing since I think it's 2018 is the recent figure. What is that number? I think I think the number's current, currently in the top 40s. So we, we fit um, lightweight satellite tags under license and these tags are fitted to hen harriers and they enable us to see exactly where the birds are. And when a bird dies, if it dies a natural death, the tag will continue working. We'll be able to go to the location and recover the bird, have the bird looked at by a vet, and we can conclude if it's a natural death. Unfortunately, people, as we know, are killing hen harriers. And if you shoot a hen harry with a tag on, the very last thing you're going to do is leave it there for a researcher to come and find it. So we know a number of these tags have been um, destroyed. So the bird has been shot. The person shooting the bird has then destroyed the tag. And the way we we can tell that the data manifests itself in a way where we have a sudden stop. The tag is working perfectly well. We know where the bird is, the bird is moving, and then suddenly the data just stops. And we know in those incidences, because they are linked to the locations and the locations are driven grouse moors, we know in those in incidents it's highly suspicious. In fact, Natural England did some research, you know, and and there's a real strong correlation with birds disappearing in those circumstances and driven grouse moors. We know who's killing these birds and we know when they're being killed. Yeah, it's as simple as that. And those tags have given you guys, well, everybody such an insight into what's really going on. I suppose they're, they've got to be one of the most useful things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've, we've now been tagging for about seven years. We've tagged over 125 hen harriers. And wow. we're currently writing all the data up for a peer reviewed paper that's going to be going to be coming out soon. And that's going to reveal the fate of those hen harries that have been tagged, you know, and um, it will be another really important piece of science in the jigsaw of telling the story of what is happening to our hen, hen harriers. It's a very rare breeding bird in England. You know, we've got a hand, handful of pairs. And whilst those pairs may produce young, we know from those young being tagged that the survival chances of those are really limited due to persecution. So this is a big problem. Absolutely. So what do you think needs to change in terms of stopping raptor persecution? What do you think needs, what, what areas do you think need to change? Um, several things. So the legislation could be better. Um, the government could take a much stronger, firmer hand with the estates that we know are killing birds of prey. What the RSPB wants is licensing. So each each driven grouse moor has a license to operate. And what that basically means is if any criminal offences in relation to birds or wildlife occur on that estate, the license can be revoked. And, and that would be a very strong deterrent because the people who are orchestrating the killing and telling the gamekeepers to kill birds of prey, if they can't run a driven grouse shoot for several years because of an incident, it will really focus their, their minds. And we, we would, probably see a reduction in persecution almost immediately from that. Um, it's, it's highly likely that that could happen in Scotland in the near, in the near future. The Scottish government are suggesting this is what they're going to do. We've just got to wait for the elections that are coming up in May and see what the outcome of those are. But um, we, we really need licensing. Of course, lots of other people are calling for a ban. They want driven grouse shooting to be stopped completely. RSPB itself has reviewed its policy recently and we are going to be looking at this situation very carefully over the next five years and if we don't see improvements in these areas then the RSPB is probably going to get tougher as well. Good stuff so 
I'm sure many people watching this, some people might be familiar with rap persecution. This might be the first time some people have heard about it. And I'm sure a lot of people will wonder what can, if anything, can they do to help? Yeah. The public can play an enormous role and they have been doing so. So, you know, thank you very, very much for everything that everyone is doing for us. Um, about 10 to 15 years ago, not many people would know what Raptor persecution was or is or where it occurs. Most people now know, lots of people know. There's been some really big national stories. There's been a, cam a campaign last year to send um, a petition to your MP calling for this to stop. So the main thing that people can do is be the eyes and ears. So when they're out in the countryside, particularly in areas where they know raptors have been killed in the past, be vigilant. And if you do see something, gather evidence. If you've got a camera, take the pictures. If you've got a video, video it. If you come across a dead bird of prey or what you think is a poison bait, you know, get in touch with the police immediately. Ring the RSPB. Let us know what you see. We, we get lots of calls from people who think they're wasting our time, but when they tell us what they've seen, it's just like the final piece of the jigsaw. We've been looking at that location in the past and the information is really, really val valuable. So please continue to report that. The easiest way is to email us, which is crime at rspb.org.uk. Or if an incident is in progress, you ring the police on 999. If you've just seen a buzzard being shot or you found a dead peregrine next to a bait, get on the phone to the police immediately from the location. Good stuff. And do you, do you personally, do you feel positive about the future? Do you think change is coming? How are you kind of inspired with the work that you do that you think change will happen? Yes. I mean, if we, if we look at the timeline, there's been lots of positive change in the very short, short space of time, you know, so we've got the public on our side. It's, it's a very um, emotive, issue um, you know no one wants to see amazing birds like golden eagle being poisoned or shot no one wants to see see that so we have to take a really strong stand lots of people are doing that we've had amazing success from things like hen hen harrier day and then people like chris packham you know spreading the news far far and wide on this issue is great so this is going in one one direction change has to come and i think change will come and i think there's a brighter future for birds of prey at this moment in time, it's not the time to take the foot off the gas, though. We we have to, you know, call this out when we see it. We've got to keep detecting evidence. And, you know, together we can stop raptor persecution. Which is exactly what you're doing. So thank you so much for the incredible work you do. So back to Chris and Megan. Thank you very much, Mark.